For one stimulating week, Cape Town becomes the creative capital of South Africa. This is a special edition of Mags on Media coming to you from Design in Daba 2014. One of the keynote speakers at this year's Design in Daba was Thomas Heatherwick, the contemporary British designer who was a major creative force at the London Olympics opening ceremony. He's also the man who's been chosen to convert a 1920s granary in Cape Town into a museum for contemporary African art, all collected by Jochen Zeitz. He's the former chairman of the sportswear company Puma. The Museum of Contemporary Art Africa is scheduled to open in late 2016. Heatherwick sat down with us in a special interview pod and told us the story. I want to talk about the grain silo complex first of all and uh, the communique says a solution that will be unique for South Africa and create the highest possible quality of exhibition space for the work displayed inside. How did you get involved with this exciting project on the waterfront? Uh, I spoke here nine years ago at the Design in Darba. I mean I've been coming to South Africa first time 16 years ago and to Cape Town and then nine years ago after my talk there was a kind of tug yeah. and someone who had an idea for what they thought could happen with the silo then took me and spent two days crawling through tubes smelling this thick pigeon poo laid on, on, on the bits of surfaces that there were and it, it was an incredible building. Yeah. Well hang on, you, you, something viscerally must have happened to you. What, what did you see that said, well I want to get involved with something like this or did the pigeon poo put you off? Not at all, no. Yeah. Well I was just struck that there was a big piece of infrastructure that had been part of the a, a quite unique system that South Africa had, which was this grain collective yeah. where farmers would all put their grain, wouldn't sell their grain, they'd put their grain into this collective of South African grain yep. that was then put and stored in, the, in a series of silos around the country and then you, get, you had a share certificate, like a share certificate, and then when the value of South African grain went up, then you could cash in your certificate, which is quite unusual. And so this was there at the bottom tip. In a way, it's almost like the whole of Africa is like a hopper. And there was this grain silo from which billions of grains were, were loaded into ships and would go to other parts of the world. But it's a funny building because unlike, say, Bankside Power Station in London, which came into disuse and then was had big halls like a turbine hall this grain silo had no space because it's all made out of tubes big gigantic concrete tubes there were no floors so how did you visualize the potential it was clear that you couldn't just put another lick of paint on it yeah, and just yeah. sort of put some lights up and call it an art gallery or call it an anything it needed uh, some response and often heritage buildings people are very timid or clumsy and just knock them all down and when three years ago we were invited people knew I, I suppose that I'd become a bit hooked on the building and when the waterfront came into new ownership they were thinking what could happen with the building and it happened that coincided the this Zeitz collection which is there, there are only two major major collections of contemporary African art and neither of them have ever been made public and so it, it, you couldn't help but be massively affected by a killer brief which is Africa has no major institution of contemporary African art and in fact that doesn't really exist anywhere in the world and so the, the weight of that and so we were involved even before they got involved and then suddenly it's like this our role has been to try to do justice I'm trying not to sound too grand but not just to Cape Town not just to South Africa but to Africa to give an institution that can be like an amplifier or fo focus on the, the work that's been happening continent-wide. I'm, I'm sensing this this project is almost it's it's consumed you have you become obsessed with it I would hope My you have been. My only way to yeah. work is, yeah. is to be obsessed. If I'm, uh, if, if, if something, it would be rude not to be if with, the, with the, the possibility. And our main task has been to find a way to put, to create 80 galleries for showing art, 
but it needed, we decided to not knock it down. I mean, you can, the fanciest new building doesn't have much soulfulness. And it's, there's this building that was the tallest building in Cape Town for many decades that had been kind of hiding in full sight of South Africans. And like, half the people will go, yeah, 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 the grain silo. But half the people from Cape Town speak to them, they go, what, where, what? Yeah. He's going, it's the tallest building, you know. We realised we needed a heart to the building. And rather than, and this is going to sound a bit odd, rather than, you know, you get belly buttons that are an outie. Yes, okay. The, you know, we I'm could sensing have, a convoluted you know, analogy. This is, analogy, this yeah, is very convoluted. Yeah. This project is an innie. Yeah. It's most... A uh, powerful move is on the inside, and it's the space that will bring everyone together, a heart space. If you think of how many billions of grain, individual grains, went through all of those uh, gigantic concrete tubes, we're just taking one and enlarging it to the size of it and carving the shape of that grain out of those tubes. And it may, it, if you've seen the images, you know, it, it's the combination of one piece of grain and all of these tubes makes a, 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 a quite extraordinary space. We have on our shoulders this one-off chance to, to give a, an institution to a continent and, and uh, not just to a city. Let's move away from the V&A waterfront now, an accomplished designer in his native Britain. The crowning glory in Heatherwick's career thus far has been the conceptualization and build of the London Olympics cauldron. Another one-off opportunity was the London Olympics. Do you still wake up and think about that? What a triumph that was, wasn't it? Thank you. You know we were given the brief originally that the cauldron should go on the roof of the stadium yeah. and have no moving parts. But when we were thinking about it, it felt that the Olympics is this amazing piece of time where 204 countries come together yeah. and don't squabble. Yeah. And it just seemed... Pure harmony. Uh, yeah. Well, mm. just for two weeks. Mm. Um, how, why, who, who's going to care if, if I design a cauldron that's twisted on a twisted stick? It's a bowl of flame. Mm. Been and there, we realized done that, yeah. Also, a, a billion people see it. But a billion people forget cauldrons and don't remember them at all. And so we realised that what they do remember is how a flame is lit. Whether that was Muhammad Ali going in Atlanta to light the, the flame, or in Barcelona there was the Paralympic archer who shot the arrow. And so we decided to try to make how it was lit be the thing. And so the children from each country brought these pieces. We didn't know if everyone would guess at that moment whether what would happen. And my most moving moment was when there was this gasp, when you could see everyone was thinking, oh no, a flat cauldron, because all the flames were lit in the middle. And then they lifted and started rising. There was this gasp, and I think it was relief rather than uh, anything else. That Where were you, it wasn't at, that, a flat where were you at that point? I was sitting with my mother and father in the audience, uh, Reaching trying for to be calm, or trying something. to just be calm, just in case it didn't work. Um, and with a passion for public service and creating spaces that serve cities and people who live in them, Heatherwick has also been tasked with updating the iconic Red London Bus. We are a country obsessed with public transport. We have public transport issues both in Johannesburg and Cape Town. Um, the London Bus, what's happening? Tell us about it. What are you doing? Uh, I mean, L London's famous for its red double-decker buses, but as is so often the case in places and cities, is that cities can forget what, what's precious to them. And the, there's no design team had been commissioned for 50 years to, to update, to make a bus that society had changed, the, the city had changed, but there wasn't a bus that was wheelchair accessible, used 40% less energy. You know, th these kind of things were an opportunity. And we but realized it's still that it's health still, it's, and still it's still iconic, that's an iconic Health and symbol. safety regulations yeah. had taken away a lot of yeah. their qualities of dignity for the passengers. Yeah. So our, our bus was just trying to rethink about the, the dignity of the passenger, which sounds pompous, but the, it, however expensive your car is, mm. if you've got a Ferrari or whatever, there's no better view of London than at the top, at the front of a double-decker bus. Mm. And so our passion is the public experience and not the private world and uh, so the bus is nothing more public than the buses 
and also they are like two-story buildings in, in moving through a city but there's 7,000 of them and it so we felt again quite responsible to try to feel we were designing a bit of the city so there's 200 of them at the moment there's another 400 being made and there will be a few thousand more made in time so but it's very important that each city has its own particular idiosyncrasy to things like its infrastructure mm. and I think some cities have made the mistake of just buying what other cities have got duplicating mm. and thinking that all the emphasis and love should be on art galleries mm. <laughs> rather than their own infrastructure and things like that so here I am straddling both the infrastructure and the art galleries here today and I thank you very much for joining us thank you And that's this week's Mags on Media special from Design in Darba in Cape Town. An inspirational and stimulating week. Until next time, goodbye and thank you for watching. ENCA.com.